Greetings, friends, to this, my fourth story in a day. Hope everyone has had a pleasant week. Uh, it's been it's been fairly eventful this week because it's been both my dad's birthday and Father's Day. So, of course, happy Father's Day to everyone out there who have children or are due to have children. Uh, it's, a, it's a good day to thank those who do a lot for us. And I guess that links well to the theme of today, which is all about knowledge. Knowledge is power, after all, and in the story world, there are lots of examples of a protagonist learning something about um, a quest or about something that they're going to defeat. And, and that's the sort of story I wanted to find today. And during this lockdown period, there has been lots and lots and lots of quiz shows. To name a few, this week I've watched Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I've watched The Chase, Britain's Brightest Family. Pointless. But not tipping point. I would, I would never sit through that. Oh, and of course, Tenable which is a, a real favourite. Three o'clock, Tenable with Warwick Davis. That is a highlight of the day. Uh, so before I started researching the story, which I know nothing about currently, I thought I'd give you a small quiz over some of the questions that have been on this week. And to make it a bit more interesting, I thought I'd hide all of the answers in the blurb below. So if you've come to this video and you've read the blurb and thought, that's nonsense, what's James on about? They are the answers to these questions. <coughs> Welcome to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Your £100 question is this. Which Disney film features a genie that appears from a lamp that is rubbed? Which Disney film features a genie that appears from a lap that is dropped? I shan't be giving you multiple choice answers. Because as I said, all the answers are down below. And bad for the environment. Which singer sings the one and only? That's your £500 question. Who sings the one and only? I'm going to pick all these up later, don't worry. What? is the chemical symbol for sodium. Your £1,000 question is, what is the chemical symbol for sodium? Well done, you're at your £2,000 question. They're all blown away, God. Uh, you're at £2,000 now. The American Big Dipper star conglomeration size um, uh, celestial being is called what? in the UK. The Big Dipper is known as what in the UK? And that's for £2,000. The penultimate question on this round, on this, this version. The nest of which animal is called the Dray? £5,000. The nest of which animal is called the Dray? And your million pound question. Which James Bond film had Aha playing the official theme song? That's which James Bond film had Aha playing the official theme song? And if you answer that, you have hypothetically won a million pounds. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to find a decent way to recycle these, find you a story, and get back to you shortly. Go and learn some amazing things about this world we live in. Bye for now. Uh, so one of the things that I think is going to slow me down significantly today is that the internet is very touch and go because we're currently downloading Call of Duty Modern Warfare, because I said it was Dad's birthday yesterday, and one of the things he got was an Xbox One. Um, 
so currently I've not tried anything. I don't know how it'll factor in. But the speeds are so slow anyway. So now it's got that on top. It may cause problems. But I'll keep you abreast of developments. Uh, just like last Sunday, I'm off to play tennis. Maybe I'll share with you some tennis trivia. So on the way to tennis, I met up with an expert of trivia, my own father, of course, for Father's Day to play some tennis. And he had these wise words to share. Yes, today being Father's Day and out with my son, it makes me... Not get hit by a car. <laughs> And we're going over to see uh, my wife, James's mother. And my trivia is, my son is actually taller than his mother. Now, the trivia is that that's a fact. A son will always be taller than a mother. Ah! To such an extent that over in America, the uh, basketball coaches and people behind the scenes and look out for tall mothers with young sons knowing full well that the young son <laughs> will eventually grow to be taller than a tall mother so ideal for the basketball perfect so there's your thing a son will always be taller than a mother well we're all gonna sleep easy tonight <laughs> thanks for that dad <laughs> Tennis is known as quite a complicated sport anyway, it's starting to rain. Um, but the most complicated thing about it is probably the scoring system, which goes love 15, 30, 40. There doesn't seem to be like a sequence there. This is due to it being the numbers on a clock face. So 15 minutes past, 30 minutes past, 45 minutes past. But it was decided that 45 was too much to say during a game of tennis. Uh, so they shortened it to 40 and and the reason why they use love one of the theories on why they use love is because a zero looks like an egg and in French the word for um, egg is is similar to the word love fleur. so uh, tennis trivia for you let's see if we finish this game before it proper rains Wimbledon isn't rained off because a little bit of rain but this isn't Wimbledon <laughs> We're running! <laughs> it's getting worse! Hey, uh, so I've dried off a little bit. Uh, my phone was in a very bad way and I was a bit concerned I may have to get the old rice treatment out. But hopefully it'll last long enough to get these videos done. Uh, so I have been looking for knowledge tales, as I've explained. And... There's a few, actually. It's probably been the easiest one to find decent stories. But there isn't really a, a big meaty tale. So instead, what I've decided to do is try and learn three short stories to share with you. In Germany... If you take a picture of your meal, the chef legally owns the right to that picture because he created it, it's his artwork. This is a random bit of trivia for you because today's theme is knowledge. And the story I have chosen is because of that theme. It's a Jewish story. And as many Jewish stories do, it consists of three brothers. There was once three brothers. And they had met in a specific location to discuss a plan. They were very adventurous brothers and they liked to one-up each other, challenge each other. You see parallels to other stories I've told here. Um, and they came up with the plan that each of them would go on an adventure and they would come back with a unique gift. And in 10 years time, they would meet back in that specific location 
and share their gift, and the best one would win. The oldest brother decided to head off into the east to a far off town, and a circus was in, in this eastern town, and there was lots of visual effects, lots of sounds, lots of people doing circusy things. There were acrobats, and there was trapeze artists, and there was clowns, and one corner, huddled in a tent all by himself, there was a magician. And when the brother went and watched this magician, he saw that he had a sort of glass ball. And the magician was looking into the glass ball, and everyone who were leaving were astounded by what they saw. And as the brother watched closer, he realised that the glass ball would show you whatever you may need to see. It was perhaps the earliest form of CCTV. And the brother said, magician, magician, tell me, what is this glass ball? And the magician said, well, this glass ball will show you wherever you want to see over the four corners of the kingdom. Whatever you're thinking, whatever you need to see in that moment, the glass ball will show you. For it is a magic glass ball. Look into it and you will see. And the eldest brother looked into that glass ball and he saw himself. Perhaps he was a selfish man. And he was holding the glass ball. But the brother didn't reveal to the magician what he saw. He just said, magician, how much do you want for it? Now the brother was a rich Jewish man. And so the magician said, no, no, I'm not, it's not for sale. It is my livelihood. It is my, mine, it's all mine. But with some bartering and some bargaining and some discussion, eventually the eldest brother walked out of that circus with a glass ball and very empty pockets. Meanwhile, the second brother, the middle brother, the Goldilocks brother, had gone the opposite direction to the west. And he had gone to a far western town. And in this western town, there were lots and lots of markets. And in one area of the markets, they were selling carpets. And the brother went up and he looked at all the carpets and there were lots of different colours and lots of different shapes and lots of different feelings to these carpets. And as he was looking around, he saw at the bottom, one of the carpets popped out. And it was almost as if he was looking at the brother. The carpet was looking at the brother. The brother watched and he could swear that he saw the carpet move. The carpet man, man of carpet, the man who sells the carpets. Tell me about this carpet at the bottom. That there, boy, is a magic carpet. And it seems to like you. If you buy this carpet, you will be able to travel anywhere in the world in the blink of an eye. And of course, the man had the money to pay for this carpet and so he paid for it and it was his, his strange gift to show to the other brothers. The youngest brother, he had gone the opposite direction still, he had gone to the south and this southern town was filled with forests of trees and trees and trees as far as the eye can see with not a single soul living in it. And the youngest brother, with one mind on that special gift, was walking through one of these forests. With nothing in his mind, he was clear, and he was happy, and he was content. Until he saw a tree, a very different tree to the others. For every tree in this forest was like a clone. They were all the same size, and the same make, and the same colour. This tree was different. It had orange blossoms growing around it. And as the man, the youngest brother, got closer to it, he realised there was a 
a pomegranate growing on it, just a single pomegranate, quite high up on the tree. And the youngest brother walked up and thought, hmm, that's strange. Here in the middle of this forest, there is a tree that looks different to all the rest and has a single pomegranate growing on it. Perhaps I will take that pomegranate and, and I could show it to the brothers as my strange gift. And I'll tell you them this story. So he reached up and he went to grab the pomegranate. And with the sun blaring in his eyes, he got closer and closer and he was on his tiptoes and he was trying to reach it. But it was just out of reach. And he tried jumping, but he couldn't get it. And he tried one more time as hard as he can. And the pomegranate fell into his hand. That's, that's, that just adds to this strange story. The pomegranate has dropped into my hand. <laughs> what a strange pomegranate it is. And in that moment, on that tree where there was now no pomegranate, a new pomegranate grew. This must be a magic pomegranate. It must be because I, I there was only one and I took it off and now there's another one there. I shall certainly win the best strange object award. Well, 10 years went by quickly, quick as a flash. Before they knew it, those three brothers were back in that location, hugging each other and sharing the stories of the journeys that they had taken over these years. And each of them showed their object. But as the eldest brother was showing the glass globe, magical glass globe, he saw in it a princess. A princess that looked a bit peaky. Her, she, she wasn't at her best. He said, I don't know why, but the glass globe has shown me this princess. Perhaps she needs rescuing. And the second brother said, show me that. And he did. I, I recognise, took it in his other hand, I recognise that, that palace, that castle. Come, step onto my magic carpet and we will go there. And quick as a flash, they were in the castle. Well, just outside it, the magic carpet didn't quite get them inside. And they knocked on the doors, bang, 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 bang. And the king came out. And normally the king wouldn't let three strangers come into the castle. It would be a security issue. But he said, you must be here about my daughter. You must have got my message, whoever that I have sent. You must have got my message that I have sent to all the doctors of the land. Whoever can cure my princess, my princess, come on. Whoever can cure my daughter can have her hand in marriage and half of this kingdom. Well, the three brothers rushed in and they, they went and they found the girl just like they saw in the glass globe. See, seeing, lying there very still. And the youngest brother heard something. Use the pomegranate. Use the pomegranate. And he looked. He realised where the voice was coming from. Use the pomegranate. The pomegranate was talking to him. He didn't tell the other brothers this, but he did say, uh, King, could you let me try something with your daughter? It might cure her. The king said, of course, go for it. And so he cut up, not on his hands, on a table. He cut up that pomegranate into four little pieces. And he took one and he did whatever you do with pomegranates, maybe took the seeds out and, and, and made it nice and tasty and ripe and juicy. And then he went to the princess, but her mouth was not open, and her eyes were not open, she was not awake. And so he gently placed it onto her lips so that the juices would gently drip into her mouth. And a moment later, she took a big, deep breath, and then her eyes opened, and her mouth opened, and she 
ate the rest of that pomegranate. And then she sat up in bed. She was alive and awake and saved by the pomegranate. And the king said, well, you, you must take her hand in marriage and you can have half of the kingdom. Well, the other brother started squabbling. I did, I did. Uh, it, it was my glass globe that showed us where the princess was. Without my glass globe, we wouldn't have found her. Hey, it was the magic carpet that flew us here. If it wasn't for the magic carpet, we wouldn't be here. Arguing, arguing, arguing. Uh, it was the pomegranate that, that made her finally come back to life. I should be the one to marry her. And there was more squabbling and more arguing and eventually the king went, enough! We'll let her decide. Princess, my dear daughter, which of these do you want to have your hand in marriage? The princess looked at each of them. Father, I would like to ask each of them a question individually. You could leave the eldest here and send the others out. And so it happened. The two brothers went out of the room and the eldest stayed in. And a moment later he came out with a smile on his face saying, I think I've won the princess's hand in marriage. For I told her that the glass globe is as good as the day it was made. It will show you anything you want to see, past, present, or future. I won this battle. And so the second brother went in, and the other two waited anxiously outside. And then he too returned, smile on his face. <laughs> no, eldest brother, you are wrong. It is my magic carpet that has saved the princess. I, I told her that it is as good as the day it was sown, that it could take her anywhere in the world in a blink of an eye. I could tell by her expression that she was convinced. And so the youngest brother went into that room and the princess sat there. Tell me, has your magic pomegranate changed since you were in the castle? The youngest brother thought for a moment. Uh, well, yes, I, I guess so. It, it was whole when I came into the castle and, and now it's in pieces. And one of those pieces is... One of those pieces made you better. That is all. The princess gave nothing away. She called the other brothers in and she said, Daddy, I have chosen who I want to marry. And of course, she paused to build the tension as all of those brothers waited anxiously to see who would get her hand in marriage. I have chosen the youngest brother, for he gave up something of his own, something that cannot be replaced. And with that, the other brothers and the king agreed and the wedding was set and the youngest brother married the princess he had never met before this moment and the other brothers were appointed official royal advisors and they all lived to say it with me boys and girls happily ever after now quick disclaimer the first time i read that story which was of course only a couple of hours ago I thought, hey, hang on a second, the, the, uh, the passion fruit, the, uh, the pomegranate just grows back again. Of course he didn't give anything up. He just, he just gave you a bit, of, like a worm. The pomegranate will just grow back. In, in fact, you'll get more pomegranates the more you split it. However, the second time I finally understood that, of course, the pomegranate breaks up a little bit. And this leads me to my closing thought, which is, is that this story hasn't got anything to do with knowledge at all. However, it is the, 
the grains of knowledge, the research of knowledge that led me to telling this story, which is why I told it. But I thought I'd try and think of a poetic ending linking the story to knowledge. I couldn't think of anything, so here's a tenuous link. That pomegranate helped the princess, and it'll be with her all her life. Just like when you learn a little piece of trivia, it comes into you and it's absorbed by the body. And then you might forget about it. But on a dark day when you're feeling particularly stupid or unintelligent, maybe that piece of trivia will come back to the front of your mind and you'll go, you know what? Maybe I'm not as silly as I first thought. And that girl, that princess, whenever she's feeling down or perhaps not as healthy as she normally does, all she has to remember is that somewhere inside her, a magical piece of pomegranate is keeping her alive. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the power of knowledge. I've been James Little. That has been a knowledge story that I have researched, learnt, and told in one single day. Until next Sunday, if you did want to have a look at the quiz answers, they will be mixed up in the blurb somewhere, perhaps uh, like a puzzle to solve. But until then, goodbye. That's terrible. It's been 10 hours. Look at it. 11%. Ah. We're running. <laughs>